alternative to the beer you drink. Go for it. By Chrysler Corporation. See the mileage makers at your Dodge or Chrysler Plymouth dealers. By Pennzoil. The Ask for Motor Oil. When your car is worth caring for, Pennzoil is worth asking for. And by AC Delco. Quality automotive parts for quality motoring. Go with the names you know. AC Delco. This is the Orange Bowl in Miami. Don Crickey with John Brody and the Miami Dolphins and Uwe Von Schumann set to kick it off to the Buffalo Bills. The Dolphins coming up two consecutive losses. There's been pressure brought on quarterback Bob Greasy. And there are the Buffalo Bill receivers, Steve Powell and Keith Moody. A high spinning kick. Powell will take it at the four-yard line. He's to the 10. He'll cross the 20, the 25, the 30. Powell is all the way out to the 40-yard line. So he busts a good one, a 36-yard return of the opening kickoff, and the Bills go on offense first and 10. Steve Howell down to make the play on special teams for Miami. John? All right, Joe Ferguson, Terry Miller, Curtis Brown. Terry Miller got off to a slow start this year. Ferguson got off firing everything he hit, seemed to stick, and uh, when, it, when the conditions exist so that Joe can throw the ball, he's got a man, number 80, that can catch it, and their offense is potent. The Bills come into the game with a 3-3 three three record. They've not beaten Miami in the last 19 meters. Joe Ferguson. Changes his alignment. Gamp, the tight end, comes strong to the right now. And they go to the run. Curtis Brown piles into the center. The Miami defense gets the ball out across the 40 and close to the 43. Baumhauer, the nose tackle, 73 on the stop. They're the pass catchers for Buffalo, and they're good ones. And that Frank Lewis is a very familiar name. In Pittsburgh, he played very well for a number of years until Lynn Swan took over. Reuben Gantz, a very strong tight end, and Jerry Butler, something else. John, just before the game started, we heard the man on the public address tell us we've got a 20% chance of sunshine. <laughs> we've got a lot of rain down in Florida right now. It's rained hard yesterday and earlier this morning. It is not raining now, but the field is wet. But you think it's a good day to throw. We'll get into that. Here's Curtis Brown. Good trap block up front by the Buffalo Bills as Salam Alir, an all-pro guard, kicked out, and the carry is out to the 49-yard line and close to a first down. Looks like it's about a foot short, Don. Uh, you were talking about the conditions of the day as we look at the defense. Ten Herter's having a great year. Bob Howard's just a fine player, and Doug Betters is in place of A.J. Dewey because Dewey has a little hamstring pull, and uh, he really, and groin pull, and he hasn't been well for the last four or five weeks. They've been talking about Bob Greasy down here, the fact that he's had some bad football games. As Don Chula says, when he plays well, the writers call him cool and collected. He gets sacked a couple of times, and all of a sudden he's no good. Well, he's got two Super Bowl championship rings, as does Chula and most of these Dolphins. Here's a handoff on a third down carry. Roland Hooks runs hard. He was stood up and hammered. Linebacker shooting the gap. Doug Betters, number 75, hit him. We'll see if the Bills got there. Okay, if this first down is picked up, it's because Hooks knew exactly where the first down line was. He stopped at the line of scrimmage. When he comes, he's trying to get the ball to that line. It's just an official's judgment in that case. If he does make it, he's within two inches, and that's... That's right. If he's got it, he's got it call. by the nose of the football and no more as the sticks come out. We're on the opening sequence from scrimmage. 13-28 left to play first quarter. The Buffalo Bills in the blue and white. The Miami Dolphins, and he is just short. And let's see what Chuck Knox and the Bills elect to do now. The ball near midfield early in the football game. Well, here they go. They haven't sent anybody in. They're not going to punt the ball back. They're going to go to the run. So we'll see Miami go with a goal line defense as Barisic comes into the football game. A big tackle from Princeton. There's the defensive back for Miami. Thomas Ball. end to the right. Joe Schiff, tight end to the left. Harry Miller and Curtis Brown are the setbacks for Buffalo. Fourth down and in inches. Ferguson takes it first down in Buffalo. He's got it. Willie Parker snapped the ball, fired out, and Willie Parker got the needed yard, and the Bills get the first down. A yard can be very difficult to pick up. In this case, it was just an inch. You almost figure Willie Parker could have taken the ball before he centered it and moved it three or four inches up forward. In this case, just everybody fall down, get yourself whenever you can, and we'll come up with a first down. That was a big six inches early in the game. So the Bills, who are openly up 
upset about a remark Bob Tuchenberg of the Dolphins made. Tuchenberg says we've never lost the Buffalo and we're never going as long as I'm playing. That well, was up in Buffalo locker room. row is bad, huh? <laughs> That's a while, isn't it? Frank Lewis. Buffalo goes right back to the run and Terry Miller takes the ball down to the 45-yard line of Miami. So the Bills come out running the football at the Dolphins. Well, I expect Ferguson to throw the ball quite a bit, but if he doesn't have to, obviously he'll throw it a lot less. Terry Miller, who I mentioned, got off to a rather slow start this year after finishing fast last year. Gets good penetration offensively from his offensive line. Five yards on first down, that's a piece of cake. The Bills have a big disparity in their rushing. They're averaging only 3.3 yards a rush. You're not going to get there doing that. They're giving up 4.6 to the rush. Their defense is so Buffalo can throw, but they've had trouble running, but they're doing all right today. Here's Curtis Brown on a second down and five carry. He drives the ball down to the 43-yard line of Miami. Baumhauer, the middle tackle, again on a stop for the Dolphins. Baumhauer and Gordon. The Buffalo Bills with Ken Jones and Joe Devlin at the tackles. Reggie McKenzie, Delano Lear are the guards. Willie Parker is the center. Ferguson, the quarterback, comes in with a rating of 105.4. He's far and away number one in the NFL. Staubach second at about 88. Ferguson's thrown only three interceptions. Has completed over 56% of his throws. And his average completion is almost 10 yards. And has had a lot of balls dropped. Which he has. Seven last week against Chicago when the Bills were shut out. Ferguson, his first throw is a strike for a first down. Coming out of the backfield was Curtis Brown. Here's the first score in for today. The Pittsburgh Steelers have moved in front of Cincinnati three to nothing on a Matt Power field goal, 46 yards out. First down, no blow. We saw the Steelers last week, and they can play football. <laughs> Looked like a track meet. You know, the funny thing, you mentioned the Steelers. They were playing Cleveland, and, and Ferguson and Sipe throw the ball a lot alike. Both of them, their personalities are a little bit similar. They're rather introverted. They're very businesslike in the way they go about playing football. But Ferguson, I think, as much as anybody in this game, has come along as far as knowing what to do and when to do it. He's been spectacular this year. Buffalo offensive line here to leave early, and Ferguson very upset about it in a first and ten play, almost slams the football down. Reuben Gant might have jumped. So that'll be a first and 15. That's tough to work against against a very good Miami defense. The defense allowed the Bills only five first downs in that opening game. When Miami beat Buffalo 9 to 7. And right now, Miami's defense is number one in the NFL, has given up only six touchdowns to the first six games of the season. John, you were saying a day like this, even though the field's wet, it's a good day to pass. I think it is because of your perception, John. You, you're able to see the ball so clearly. There's no sun in your eyes, there's no glare, there's no squint. Uh, also, there's no wind here. Uh, it's a kind of day when it's a little bit wet. I think the offensive receiver has a little edge on the defensive back in a day like that, and I think there'll be a lot of balls completed because of those conditions. That's interesting. We'll see what transpires now as Ferguson goes on first and 15. No score. First quarter. Bills with a football following the opening kickoff. They go to the run, and Curtis Brown turns up field and does very nicely as he fights his way down to the 37-yard line of Miami. Neil Colsey, number 20, was on the stop for the Dolphins, but John, the Buffalo Bills have been running the ball at the Dolphins. John, they're getting awfully good surge in their offensive line. Reggie McKenzie's playing awfully well right now. Ken Jones, both times they've gone off the left side. It's been intended to go up over the middle. However, he's cut to the outside because Jones and McKenzie have gotten awful good penetration. So on a first and 15, the carry is good for seven. It's going to be second down and eight now. Ball at the 37-yard line of Miami. No score, first quarter. Ferguson, he's got time. He swings it out. Oh, oh. Curtis Brown could not hold on. People were out in front, too. It looked like a little bitty layoff that you throw because your receivers are, are closed. However, this is a perfect setup for a screen. If, if, if Curtis Brown can hang on to that ball, I didn't see anybody to handle him within 15 yards. Joe DeLamalier, the right guard, was way out in front of the play. That wasn't a safety bell. That was a set play. They had the guards out in front. And Brown caught the ball. He'd have gone somewhere. That's going to bring up third down and eight now. And Jerry Butler, who is being double covered, moves out wide to the left. Three wide receivers in the game now. Lewis comes out to the right, and Pacone is in a slot formation at the top of your screen. Third and eight for Buffalo. Ferguson steps in. He lets it rip. Frank Lewis goes up. The ball comes in a little high. A 
let's take a look at Jerry Butler run his pattern on the play. All right. A pass pattern is designed so that everybody gets in the act. Frank Lewis runs patterns just about as well as anybody, but in order for him to get open, people have to be concerned. Here's Small, very concerned with Jerry Butler. He's coming in on a quick turn in. As you can tell, Ferguson has already decided to go down over the middle. You'll see a lot of Butler. That ball was thrown just a little bit high. Now Rusty Jackson set to punt the ball and back to receive is Nat Moore. He's in the middle of a three-man formation. Jackson will be angling his putt. He hits it from the 47-yard line of Miami. Nicely done by Jackson. Fair catch is made at the eight-yard line. So the Dolphins get the football, but they start out in a hole as Kozlowski fair caught the ball. And I think Nat Moore might have said, I'm not too sure you did the right thing, Coach, but that's where it'll be when we come back here at the Orange Bowl in Miami as the Dolphins ready for their first possession and no score on the board. Back at the Orange Bowl in Miami, this is Don Cricky with John Brody. Right now, John, in the AFC Eastern race, we have Miami and New England tied at four and two. They're going to play next week. And Buffalo only a game behind. This is going to be good right down to the wire, it looks like. Today's game is so important because it can make this race a three-team a three -team race. I think Buffalo has the people to contend. If they get some people defensively, they'll be fine. But when you start contending with Miami and New England, you better stock yourself at all positions. There's a guy that's well stocked, Don Shula. He's got the players. Miami going on offense first and ten now. They go to the run. Delvin Williams runs hard. He is struck hard as Hazlitt comes in and really pops him 55, the rookie inside linebacker from Indiana State. He's a sticker in the first game against uh, the Dolphins. Hazlitt opened as a rookie, started the game, and had 17 tackles, 13 unassisted. Lucius Sanford, 57th on one outside position. They've got Kadish, a former number one draft choice of the Dolphins, playing the middle guard for Buffalo, 71. Then Williams and Sherman White are the defensive end. Second down and eight for the Dolphins. They like to run the ball. And Buffalo has been vulnerable. Here's Delvin Williams taking it to the secondary. And Williams gets out across the 15-yard line. He'll be short of a first down, but not by much, John. When you talk, you know, you get Langer and Larry Little and Ed Newman and guys like that playing up inside. And it's very tough, no matter how you execute your defense, to hold people for less than a three- or a four-yard gain. That time, the entire interior line just opened a hole two, three yards wide. Delvin Williams picks up seven, and they got a short third and one. That's what it will be, a third and one now for the Dolphins. The greasy down behind his all-pro center, Jim Langer. Sherman White, the right end for Buffalo, is in early. <laughs> early is not, if it's too early, it's not good. So the Bills look like they anticipated the count. Do uh, Greasy's as good as there is, though, isn't he, as far as jumping people offside? You weren't bad at that either. I really think, Don, that there's seven or eight guys in this game who can who can change the count at the right time to give themselves the best of it. And if anybody is subject to jumping, they'll take advantage of it. That time, Sherman White, trying to make a big play, made a bad one. What do you do to get the guys to jump offside? Well, everybody has a rhythm. Everybody has a, uh, a personality, we'll say, and, and you get into a rut. You start calling things on two or three or one. All you have to do is change it a little, and you'll see some of those hamstrings start puckering. <laughs> Gordon McCarter, our referee, gives this. So Gordon McCarter gives the offside signal against the Buffalo Bills. The referee's mic is not working at the moment. It was Sherman White. It was offside for Buffalo, the right end. So the Dolphins move it out. They get a first down. There is the offensive set for Miami. Greasy, Delvin Williams, and Larry Zonka. Not a bad group. Zonka's already eclipsed his rushing mark of last year with the Giants. He has 350 yards already this season through six games. He's got 10 to go, and he's got some more right now. Big guy just leans in and gets a couple of yards. You know, people, people may disagree, Don, but it's my opinion that this may be the toughest test for Larry Zonka all year because Buffalo has been run against very easily. They're going to give up a lot. They're going to make Greasy start throwing the ball because he hasn't thrown it very well. As we see, he's got excellent receivers. Uh, however, he's going to be tested. But Buffalo will have seven, eight people at the line of scrimmage all day long. If they can beat him doing that, then they're just a better team. It is second and eight now for Miami. Pitch back. Delvin Williams turns up field. Buffalo's pursuit is good. Coming across for Sherman White. And also on the play was Steve Freeman, number 22, the strong safety. Another score in now Cincinnati. Ken Anderson has just thrown to rookie tight end Dan Ross from seven yards out. Chris Barr hit the field goal. It is seven to, seven to three. 
Cincinnati's taking the lead over Pittsburgh. There is the offensive line of Miami. And this is Bob Kuchenberg's birthday. You know, I read where he's a free agent out of Notre Dame. Do you think Notre Dame has another free agent in the game? You know, if you've gone to Notre Dame and they don't know you're any good, I don't know how you're going to make any club. He came here from the Chicago Owls, if you can believe that. If you don't get noticed there, I guess you're not going to. Larry Little, who has not played well this season, and that is in the opinion of his coach, Don Chula, came running out of there like a getaway thief. You know, you may, have, not been snapped. You, know, you may have just, just captured the methodical uh, look that Miami has has seemed to, to have adopted because they have always been a group of personalities that really got after it. Their best players, Larry Little, Bob Greasy, aren't having the kind of big years that they've always had to carry this club. No, their offense hasn't been there. The defense has been just fine, but the Miami offense just has not clicked. They had one big game against Chicago, blew the Bears out here. But Shula says we've only had two really good quarters of offensive football. That was against Chicago in the second half when we scored four touchdowns. Ben Williams, Mike Cadish, and Sherman White. They've got a big job. Cincinnati is in scoring position again. They have recovered a fumble on the Pittsburgh 38 yard line. So there could be an upset in the making, although you've got to play four quarters of good football to beat Pittsburgh. Swing pass that goes to Bullock. He's got people in front. Jeff Nixon come in and hit them. Knocks him down. It is short of a first down on a third and 12 play. Bulash almost got there, but Miami will have to punt. We'll take a double look at this now. Well, Bulash isn't too happy, but he really had very little he could do. A screen play with third down and 12 yards to go is a defensive. It's a piece of cake for them because they love to give you a little ground. Everybody move up toward the ball, stop the play. You can give them seven or eight yards. That's just what they gave him. Let's take a look at Bob Kuchenberg. Got him a little bit too good, Cooch. <laughs> this is a screen pass. Nixon came up and made the hit that stopped the first down. So now George Roberts will punt for Miami. Lou Pacone and Keith Moody are back for Buffalo. Bad snap. He gets time. Drills a spiral downfield. But the play is negated by an official's whistle before he kicks the ball. They're going to bring it back. We have six minutes and 14 seconds left to play in the first quarter here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Don Cricky with John Brody. Buffalo Bills nothing, Miami Dolphins nothing as the play comes back. The Dolphins come in with a good defense against the rush. Only 3.5 yards of carry have they given up. What do we have here now? The official's mic is not working. Gordon McCarter's telling us something. What does he say, John? <laughs> It all over again. I think he said we'll do it again. Might have wanted a new football in there. Now Keith Moody is back alone. Attempted at the block. They almost got it. Moody will return it. There's some good blocking set up. Moody gets around the corner. And that is run out of bounds by Ron Lee, number 86, a rookie from Baylor. So the Bills go on offense for the second time in the football game. First in 10. They'll have it inside their 40-yard line against undefeated Harry Kotsia, live from Pretoria, South Africa. That's next Saturday on NBC's Sports World. It is first and 10 now for the Buffalo Bills. Joe Ferguson at quarterback. He drops the throw on first down. Let's her go long. He's got a man out there, but the ball's under. Thrown into the inner. Had a play on the ball. They were going for the home run ball to Jerry Butler, but it didn't get there. The strange thing to me, Don, is that Butler did not look for the ball any earlier than he did. He actually got about 30 to 40 yards down the field before he even looked back. Very well covered. However, good play up in the line of scrimmage. When you're throwing on first down with play action passes, the purpose is to stymie the defensive lineman. That time they did a perfect job. Neil Colsey had a play on the football, the free safety. Barr just missed a 39-yard field goal for Cincinnati, so the score holds there. Cincinnati 7, Pittsburgh 3. It is second down and 10 now for Buffalo. Joe Ferguson takes a deep drop. Let's her go. Oh, okay. Ferguson doesn't throw many interceptions, but that's as close as you're going to come without getting one as he throws into three men. And two of them weren't Buffalo Bills. That was a situation that Ferguson, once he let the ball go, would love to have had it back. 
Take a look, right in the middle of the field. Willie Parker on Bob Baumhauer. You can tell McKenzie is back, 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 back in off, seeing who he can help out, pick up. Ferguson was rushed just a little bit. When he did throw it a little earlier than he wanted to, he would love to have had it back and taken a sack, because it was almost an interception. Foley was playing the ball the whole way. So Ferguson, a 56% thrower this season, has hit only one of six now. That's good for but five yards. He'll be gunning it here. It's third down and 10. Three wide receivers in the game as Bacone comes in to join Jerry Butler and Frank Lewis. And they'll get five free yards there as Bocamp run a blitz. He gets a free play, does Ferguson. He upfield. That's one of the few times, Don, where they make eight yards, they get a five-yard penalty, but they're going to have to take the penalty because they'd have been short of the first down. It wouldn't help them. They'll line up again and have third down and five. Kim Camper was coming out of blitz, one of the Miami linebackers. They go with Bo Camper 58 on the outside. Okay, we saw Kim Camper jump, but I think that the purpose of this picture is to show you the zone defense that Miami employs so effectively. What they do is they get their linebackers into a deep drop. That time Ferguson had to throw the ball early because he rolled out. The backers didn't get as deep as they normally do. But throughout the afternoon, their four linebackers will get as deep into the secondary as any four in the game. They got a great zone coverage. Here's the signal against Camper. If you joined us late, we're coming to you from the Orange Bowl in Miami with John Brody. This is Don Crickey. The Buffalo Bills with their second possession. They moved the ball well the first time they had it. Then came up short. Penalty set them back and had a punt. Miami had a punt it back to Buffalo. And now at 540, left to play in the first quarter. The Bills have a third down and five play coming up. At their 43-yard line. No score on the board. This kid is one of those real fine 4 5 40 runner, just an outstanding athlete, playing corner where they play a lot of zone. He can do just as well playing man to man. Once in a while throughout the day, you'll see them put him in that position. Now, Rusty Jackson's in the game for Buffalo for his second punt. And back to receive is a rookie from Alabama, Tony Nathan. Back with him, Gary Davis and Mike Kozlowski. There is Rusty Jackson, former LA Ram punter. Came here with his former coach there, Chuck Knox. That is a good one. The ball is hit well by Jackson. A high punt carrying deep downfield. It's going to be taken by Nathan inside his 15. Tony Nathan breaks the tackle. Look out, look out, look out. Here comes Tony Nathan. A lot of speed. And Nathan, one man has a shot at him. Rusty Chambers. Chambers can't get him. And Tony Nathan from Alabama, a rookie, will take it the distance for a touchdown. Well, Dan Zelik made a fine effort to get in a position to make the play. He could not handle it. Nathan made an excellent play. You could kind of feel the whole thing happening. The contained man, when he went down the field, kind of got a piece, but there was nothing to seal him from getting to the outside when he did so. Easily ran away from the punter, and it was no contest when Dan Zelik tried to come over and make the play. You see, he gets underneath Willie Parker. A couple people overrun it. When that happens, you know, you know the game is in trouble. Jackson has no play on Nathan. Gilek makes a fine play to get over, force him to the inside, but nobody's coming to help out. This is what always happens when punters are the last man waiting to make the play. They just can't keep up with a real good punt return. Six to nothing to Miami. And now, Uvavon Shaman will try to point after. He hits it hard. The signal it's good and the Miami Dolphins on a spectacular play by rookie Tony Nathan break open the first score of the game it is seven to nothing Miami will be back with the Dolphins kickoff in a moment to soar like an eagle free every man's dream so you go for it making the most of now from the life you live to the beer you drink since 1849, the beer that makes the most out of life is Schlitz. When you're making a beer, make it this one here. Schlitz makes it great. Go for it. But you got to get them behind the wheel, and you got to you got to show them what kind of product you've got, and we've got a good one. 
50 owners of T-Bird, Grand Prix, Monte Carlo, came to test drive America's newest personal car, Murata by Dodge, engineered to be gas efficient, but not at the expense of styling or luxury, and not at the expense of performance. Better than two out of three who drove Murata preferred it to their own personal car. This Murata is a car that I'm gonna drive. That's gonna be my car. Test drive total performance from Dodge. A world premiere. Barbara Cartland's The Flame is Love. She loved him passionately, but the evil Marquis was determined to have her. Linda Pearl stars in The Flame is Love, Monday. Next Sunday, kick off a big day of football action with NFL 79. When it takes a look at life on the inactive list through the eyes of injured receiver Billy Brooks of Cincinnati. Then a dynamite doubleheader. Most of the country will see the Dolphins and the Patriots. Also, San Diego and Los Angeles. Here's the kickoff. Keith Moody takes it back for Buffalo, crosses the 20, and the Dolphins special teams throw him back. So the Bills will go on offense, and they need a big play now, as the Dolphins certainly got one, the longest punt return in the history of this franchise. 86 yards by rookie Tony Nathan of Alabama, and the Dolphins take a 7-0 lead. And that's what it looks like next Sunday here on NBC. Miami at New England. They'll be gunning for the lead in the AFC East. And the 4 o'clock game, San Diego at Los Angeles, a matchup of two of the best in the West. Parts of the country will see Houston at Seattle. Tony Nathan taking a rest, waiting for another crack at it. He just took it 86 yards on a punt return. First and 10, Buffalo. Now the Dolphins' defense, fired up by the great special teams play, comes out and stops the run cold. Rusty Chambers, 51, comes in and hits Curtis Brown. And there was no gain on the play. It'll be second down and 10 for Buffalo. John? You know, you get the feeling when somebody scores uh, on a long punt return or a long pass or some big play, it seems to pump up the offense and the defense. The whole group gets excited. And now a big play has to be created by Buffalo, whereas things were starting to go their way. They had two pretty good uh, field position situations. They didn't take advantage of either one. Somebody runs one back for a touchdown. Now they have to start over. Start over indeed. Now Ferguson takes a look. He's got a problem. Bo Camper runs in him. Curtis Brown catches the ball, but he's going to lose yardage. All pro play by Kim Bo Camper. First he hurried Ferguson into the throw, and then he came back and made the play. Here's the first quarter score. Steve Little hit a field goal for the Cardinals from 27 yards. They lead the Eagles 3-0. Pittsburgh at Cincinnati, but that has since changed, and the Bengals have now taken the lead 7-3. John Brody's former team, the San Francisco 49ers, hasn't won yet, but they're leading 3-0 over the Giants. <laughs> Don't try to stand on that, babe. <laughs> now it'll be third down and 15 for Buffalo. A Raymond Worsing field goal put the 49ers up on the Giants. Third and 15 for the Bills as Miami's defense is fired up at this point. Bo Camper again. Kim Camper is one of the biggest linebackers in the game. 6'6", 245 pounds out of San Jose State. He was hurt early in the season. He's not today. He's hurting people. Don, they've got two great players from San Jose State in Gerald Small and Bo Camper. Now, what Bo Camper does is he gives the team an extra dimension. He can go down as a down lineman. He can also play as a, as a linebacker. At 6'6", 245, he'll stand up with anybody as a lineman. He's very active, puts on a very good pass rush. The people in the league are gaining more and more and more respect for this guy. Hey, the Bills have a whole lot of it at this point. As right now, the field has been shortened for the Bills. They're way back in their own end, and the Miami Dolphins are going to get good field position. Jackson hits the ball. A gusting wind kicks up, and... Miami will have the ball at the Buffalo 37-yard line. So the Miami defense comes up, throws the Bills back, and now Greasy and the offense come out. The Dolphins are leading 7-0, but it was Tony Nathan, a punt returner, who put the points up. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl with the Dolphins in possession after this. In the first quarter, and the Dolphins in the lead 7-0 on an 86-yard punt return by rookie Tony Nathan. Greasy goes to Zonka. 
Lucius Sanford, a big linebacker from Georgia Tech, came in and filled the gap, put a head on, slug on Zonka, but his power drove him inside the 35. Miami is now going with the win. In order there for them to move, they're going to have to throw it. You see Langer gets pretty good <laughs> offensive penetration. We mentioned that Zonka is going to be tested today. There's a, there's a lot of effort to pick up two yards. It's going to be tough going that way all day long just because Buffalo's got an extra man in there. John, as somebody once said about Zonka, he doesn't break many 60-yard runs, but after you hit him, you wish he had. <laughs> Sanford is uh, one of the hardest hitters around, put everything he had into that. You saw Sanford went back, and here comes Delvin Williams. Buffalo cutting it down on a second and eight play at about the 32-yard line. Shane Nelson on the stop. Now we've got in the second inning at... What, what inning is that? Three to Three two. To two. Must have got somebody from the 49ers in the end zone. Don Melville, the punter, snapped out of the end zone. That's what the note says. It's pretty tough to snap it out of the end zone when you're the punter. Sometimes <laughs> the center can do that. Just... Norm Bulas is in the backfield now for Miami. Gary Davis is in there with him. Third down and six for the Dolphins. 37-yard line of Buffalo. Greasy is going to throw. He's got a lot of time, and he's got a man wide open in that door. Hit twice, broke away, and looks like he has the first down. What a superb play by Moore. He comes, he plays the play coming out of the backfield, gives himself a lot of room going to the sideline. This is the sort of thing that Bob Greasy has been excellent at, as good as any quarterback in the game, hitting backs in the proper spots between the zone areas for the past 10 years. You know it's coming, but you don't know how to handle it. Here he goes. He's trying to go downfield. He's got good pass protection. Moore comes out of the backfield, runs up the field six, seven yards, and then puts on a great effort to pick up the last two and get the first. I think he's got the first. Fred Smurless, fighting people pretty hard, gets close to Greasy, but no other Bill did. So Matt Moore's good play after he was hit, getting ahead for the first down, gives the Dolphins possession at the 26-yard line of Buffalo first and 10. With a minute and five seconds left to play in the first quarter here at the Orange Bowl in Miami, as Miami with a 7-0 lead starts to mount another challenge. Duriel Harris, he's a deep threat, wide to the right. Matt Moore to the left. Greasy goes to Delvin Williams, a power sweep. And Williams, riding behind his blockers, gets the ball inside the 25-yard line, down close to the 23. 64, Ed Newman led the blocking. You know, if you, if you had two backs that you'd like to have to complement one another, I would think Zonka and Delvin Williams would have to be about as good as any pair. However, neither one has been quite as effective as everybody was looking forward to when they started the year. Now, we're going to look at Larry Little. Little can do it. He's sitting there trying to seal off all the penetration. He does so. When Delvin Williams cuts up, he has nowhere to go. Still picks up four yards. Shula says Delvin Williams' feet are never on the ground very long. A very quick stepper. And here is Zonka busting off on the big back from Syracuse. Drives on down to the 10-yard line. He took it 10 yards, then got in a street fight with three guys and took him another three yards. <laughs> Tony Green and Charles Rooms finally knocked him down. Boy, he's tough. That hit that Sanford put on a little bit ago is as hard as you'll see, and Sanford just went flying backwards after it. The first quarter runs out. The Dolphins are challenging again. With Miami in the lead, 7 to nothing. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. We are ready to start the second quarter here at the Orange Bowl in Miami as Bob Greasy goes out and joins the Dolphin offense. Don Crickey with John Brody. The Dolphins are in the lead, 7 0. They scored on an 86 yard punt return by a rookie from Alabama. Tony Nathan, the longest punt return in Miami Dolphin history. That broke the game open, and since then, the Dolphins have been in command. Their defense took the ball back, stopping Buffalo cold, and now Greasy gives off to Delvin Williams. Power sweep, and Del Williams is down inside the 10, down close to the 8-yard line, and a first down carry. Don, Delvin picked up three yards. I mean, it's not bad when you're down in that post, but when it's first and 10, I think it's the toughest place on the field to pick up a first down from. Obviously, if they do so, they'll score a touchdown. We're looking at the offensive line. The reason I say that is look how bunched up everybody is defensively for Buffalo. Delvin Williams made an excellent move to pick up three or four yards. Uh, it just comes so tough right there that when you pick up three or four, now what's he do? It's second and six. You're going to run it in? Very seldom. Take your pick right now the way Miami's line's coming off the ball. Second down and six Dolphins inside the Buffalo 10. Larry 
Tatanka fouls Larry Little. And once again, they're in the end zone. They've been there many times together. This Dolphin team over the years they've been together. Don, if nobody gets a piece of Zonk until he gets into the secondary, the defensive back has no chance. Little makes an excellent block. Langer makes a fine block. He just takes Tony Green and runs right over the top of him. The Miami Dolphins own the AFC East here at the Orange Bowl. Since Shula's been here, the Dolphins are 32 and 4 against AFC Eastern opponents here in the Orange Bowl. They're 60 and 11. 60 wins, only 11 defeats overall at the Orange Bowl since Shula came in. The extra point is hit up and good by Uva Van Schoenen. And so with 14-15 left to play in the first half, the Miami Dolphins extend their lead to 14 to nothing. First on an 86-yard putt returned by Nathan, then on the six-yard run by Larry Zonka. So we'll be back with the Dolphins. The Dolphins have just gone 64 yards with perfect offense. Larry Zonka from six yards out on the payoff end. It's 14 nothing. Here's the kickoff. Keith Moody has the ball for the bill. He's across the 20 and the 25 and still working at it. He is out to the 29-yard line. And there the Bills are going offense first and 10. Tonight on NBC at 7 o'clock Eastern time, it's Disney's Wonderful World, Baseball Fever. At 8 o'clock, The Miracle Worker on the big event starring Patty Duke Aston and Melissa Gilbert. And then the 10 o'clock Eastern time on NBC primetime Sunday with Tom Snyder. All right now, 14.02 remains to be played in the first half. The wind is kicking up here in Miami. We've not had rain since the start of the game, but we, now it's coming down. It started to come in. Somebody said before the game they don't like rain on Bob Greasy's glasses. <laughs> but they do like it on Larry Zonka's feet because he can plow when the field gets bad. Hand off goes Curtis Brown. Good change of pace move and the full back from Missouri. Takes the ball over the 30 and out to the 34-yard line. McKenzie led the blocking. Good gain on the play, five yards. Second down and five coming up for Buffalo. John, there was an article in one of the New York papers this morning, and they talked about Greasy having a hamstring pull, but there's speculation it could be his eyesight which is failing at this point. <laughs> I've heard so much about peripheral vision over the years, Don. All you see when you're back there in the pocket is a bunch of helmets and elbows, <laughs> and you're trying to find any piece of your own jersey you can find. So I just don't think it has anything to do with his eyesight. You don't need that real good peripheral vision to see these guys come at you. All right. To turn up field and the Dolphins get him. A.J. Dewey, number 77, the right end from LSU, and Larry Gordon, number 50, one of the outside linebackers around the play for the Dolphins. Vern Denherter, Bob Bauthauer, and A.J. Dewey across the three man front. A.J. Dewey, as, as we see this ball pitched back to Curtis Brown, there is nowhere for him to go. Dewey makes an excellent play getting across the line of scrimmage, being able to force the action when he does so. Larry Gordon kind of finishes him off. Look at the blocking, but this is just excellent defensive play. Nobody's allowing themselves to be pushed back. The play's an automatic loss. Now Barrett pitches in the game as a tackle as they go to their the pass rushing defense. Five defensive backs in. Ferguson against the big rush. Okay, he unloads. But it comes in low as Joe Ferguson, who's been rather well protected for the most part this season, has a problem today against Miami. They're coming with linebackers and just about everything they got out there. Well, these guys were blocking everybody that time. The problem is one of them caught Joe. He couldn't get back before before the defensive line did. He could never set up. He was smart enough to find a way to wheel out, got around the containment, but the play was never going to be any good. Once he hit Roland Hooks, who couldn't get across him to make the block. It's going to be tough to throw now as the wind keeps up and the umbrellas come out as the rain is falling here at Miami. Jackson ready to punt for the bill, gets it at his 25. It's a good one downfield. They kick it away from Nathan with good reason. Here's Kozlowski putting his head down, and the rookie from Colorado takes it across the 40 to the 42. Scott Hutchinson made the tackle for Buffalo, number 90. Nathan doesn't see the ball again today. That'll be soon enough for Buffalo. They're taking it 86 yards. Right now, a break in the action. Miami in command at the moment, 14 0. Mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the. Washington leads Cleveland 3 0, second quarter score. Philadelphia now trailing 6 0 to St. Louis as Steve Little hit another field goal for the Cardinals. It's first down and 10 for Miami. Ball to the 41 yard line of the Dolphins, hand off Delvin Williams. Good play by Buffalo. Shooting the gap was Shane Nelson, number 59. Cincinnati still holding to a 7 3 lead over the Pittsburgh Steelers in the second quarter at Cincinnati. 
And the New York Giants now lead 9 to 3 over the 49ers as quarterback Phil Sims is running in from 18 yards out for a giant touchdown. Giants with a touchdown and a safety in that game. The 49er punter inadvertently kicked it out of his own end zone. Second down and eight yards to go for the first down for Miami. Weather conditions making it tough to play football right now. It is raining and there's a lot of wind. That's Zonka's kind of weather. He likes it ugly. Larry Zonka takes it up the middle inside the Buffalo 45-yard line. And as Zonka goes down, John Soto's a penalty marker. You know, what Zonk has done so long, I don't know if he did this well in New York when he was playing and he wasn't as effective as he has been here, but he sets up so close to the line of scrimmage and he gets through the point of attack so fast that if his linemen get any piece of the defensive lineman, he's by there and he's got six or seven yards. Zonk has now run the ball five times for 31 yards, as you see, and the one touchdown from six yards out. Let's hear the call. We apologize if the official's mic is not working. Ball is set now at the 42-yard line. Now, Cleveland has come back to take a 6-3 lead over Washington. Calvin Hill ran it in from two yards out, but the extra point attempt was blocked. It'll be a first down for the Dolphins at the 43-yard line of Buffalo. 14-0 Miami in the second quarter. Back to the well, and Zonka gets some more work. His seventh carry of the day takes him down inside the 40 to the 37. Smurless, the nose guard, rookie from Boston College, on the stop for Buffalo, number 76. Larry Little led the blocking, 66. Don, we were talking about how close Zonka gets to the line of scrimmage. That time he was only four yards deep, but Ed Newman, Jim Langer, Little, Kuchenberg, when these guys get their forward surge like they do so often offensively, he just finds whatever crack seems to open itself out. They don't do a lot of pulling. They used to when they were young. Right now, they're primarily a straight-ahead ball club. In the opening game of the season, it was a similar circumstance. After the Bills had taken the lead over Miami, the Dolphins in the rain at Buffalo on September 2nd gave the ball to Zonka time and again as he drove downfield and subsequently with the game-deciding touchdown. In a 9-7 Miami win over the Bills, the 19th consecutive time that the Dolphins have beaten Buffalo. Buffalo can explode, though. Even though they were shut out last week, they're still the highest scoring team in the league this year. Tazanka on second and five, and he is close to a first down, might have it. Larry Little is winning at the line of scrimmage. He's been under criticism as Chuck Knox can do little to stop the play of Zonka and Little. Two big guys are just getting out there first. I think that's been it's been one of my Miami's big secrets as we look at Chuck Knox he knows one thing his offense can't score if they don't get the ball and Miami controls the ball about as well as any team in the game and when they get 14 points ahead it's not like a team that has to throw to get points on the board these guys can take the ball move at six seven minutes kick three points and you're all your offensive guys are so cold they don't know what to do very good point Buffalo's explosive offense can't do a thing as long as Miami's running the ball down the field. Don Shula. His contract is up next year here in Miami. A lot of speculation as to where he may go. He was quoted in the Boston Globe last week as saying he would like to go to Notre Dame. I don't think he'd mind staying here. I don't think they'd mind keeping him. Pitch back. Goes to Delvin Williams. He's inside the 30 on a first down carry. And he's down to the 26-yard line. Steve Freeman, the strong safety, made the stop for Buffalo. As Zonka led the way. Delvin Williams holds the single-season rushing records for two teams, the 49ers when he was with them, and also for Miami at over 1,200 yards last year. As we see the Giants take a 16-3 lead over my pals, the 49ers. Sims this time threw the ball to Ernest Gray for 12 yards, a 13-point lead early in the first half. You know, we were talking about, and I kind of got away from it when I was talking about Williams and Zonka. I'm saying they probably, as well as they complement each other, won't be as statistically great as they have been in the past, but their contribution will be great. They can still play. Second down and four. Greasy hands off. Zonka takes the ball, and he is, boy, this is vintage Zonka. I mean, he sat in the bench in New York getting $333,000 a year for three years. He comes back here and does this. Well, Hazlitt met him, but he met him about three yards past the line of scrimmage. That's too far back into your own secondary for a middle linebacker to be picking up the fullback. You can see Langer gets a, gets a good piece right in there. He moves his man back, 
By the time they get there, he's still he's already picked up three or four. Got to meet him with a two by four or something to slow him up. Zonka taking it down the field in the rain here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. 8.30 to play. First half. Dolphins lead the game 14-0. First and 10. Delvin Williams lost his footing. This is about as good a grass surface as you'll find in the rain. It is the prescription athletic turf, the field that was developed at Purdue University. There's a suction system. It can drain the water off. Delvin Williams, he's been getting the ball a lot. But Greasy's had problems with interceptions. John doesn't have to worry about it today because he's not throwing it. <laughs> he's thrown the ball pretty well when he's had an opportunity, but Larry Little just came off. Seems as if he hurt his shoulder or his arm. Anyway, Loxo is in replacing him. They say he's an excellent player. When you replace Larry Little, you better be. Loxo, number 68, the right guard. On second down and seven, right back to Zaka. He draws a crowd and takes it right along with him. All the way down to the 12-yard line. The third and short yardage now for Miami as they drive what could be a third touchdown coming up. Leading the game 14-0. Excellent offensive line, Serge. As Laxo pulls out, his offensive line has left him about two yards behind him. If he'd known they were going to get that kind of surge, he could have snuck up in the hole and helped the running back. You've got to play a few plays before you get comfortable. See Larry Little being attended to. Cincinnati's giving Pittsburgh some problems. Ken Riley of the Bengals just recovered a fumble on the 16-yard line of Pittsburgh. Cincinnati leading the game 7-3. Nat Moore wide to the right. Duriel Harris is to the left. Greasy hands off to Delvin Williams. Turning up field. Good play by the Buffalo defense on third down and three. They give Delvin Williams a little, if anything at all. Freeman came up and filled, as did Lucius Sanford, 57. So now the field goal unit comes out. And what did we discuss? Here they've got a 14 to nothing lead. They get the ball on their own 35 or 40 yard line. They take about five minutes off the clock. They're going to settle for three points. But the offense has done its job. They haven't allowed Buffalo to get back in it. You got it. Ron Jaworski just threw a touchdown pass from three yards out. Seven to six. Eagles lead the Cardinals. Threw it to Harold Carmichael. Uva Von Schaumann from Oklahoma, the man who displaced Garo Yepremian, will try the field goal. He's hit seven of 11 this year. Shaman drills it, and the Dolphins have three more points. With six minutes and 14 seconds left to play in the first half, Miami extends its lead to 17 to nothing. Cincinnati is now down on the five-yard line of Pittsburgh. NBC Sports World is coming up next Saturday, and you're going to see a great one, a World Heavyweight Championship fight. We'll tell you more about it after Uva Van Shaman kicks the ball off for the Dolphins. They lead the game 17-0. Strikes it, not too deep. Steve Powell across the 15-yard line for Buffalo and across the 20. He's out across the 30 and gets a good return out to the 35-yard line. So the Bills need the big strike here. They could use a Ferguson to Butler. Next Saturday, it will be live from Pretoria, South Africa. Big John Tate undefeated against Harry Coetzee, also undefeated. For the WBA World Heavyweight Boxing Championship, you'll see that live on NBC Sports World. We were talking about Larry Little. He has got a bruised shoulder. They've stated he'll be back in the ball game. Maybe. The guy trying to work it out there. First and ten, Buffalo. Bills trail 17 nothing. 6:02 to play in the first half. Rain has let up now. But the Bills go to the run, and not for much. And Barisic is in at nose tackle for Baumhauer, made a stop on Terry Miller. Miller was a 1,000-yard rusher, as you know, last season as a rookie. But he hasn't been able to get it going this year, nor have the Bills with their running in. It just hasn't been there. Well, I think a lot of that is due to the fact that uh, the Lamalor has been hurting a little bit. Uh, their offensive line hasn't created the holes that they did late in the season last year. Their total coordination just isn't quite as good, but their offense has been productive. Ferguson's been throwing great. That's right. Miller got his in the last eight games of the season. He really tore it up then. Roland Hooks runs hard, breaks the tackle on the second down and eighth play. He carries the ball out to the Buffalo 40, and that'll bring up third down and about four. Don, we've mentioned how Chambers good the guards down are. The stop. We've mentioned how good the guards are for Buffalo. Reggie McKenzie, Joe Delamalure. Here's McKenzie. He can pull out. When you've got a guard that can pull out, get around the corner as fast as he does, 
knock Small out of the way and give your back a chance to cut up. It forces the defense to have excellent penetration and excellent pursuit. That time they got there in time, almost got a big gain out of it. John, we just been informed. Pete Johnson took it in from two yards out for Cincinnati. And the Bengals now lead the Steelers 13 to 3. Third down and four for Buffalo. Ferguson with a deep drop. Big rush. He throws. Intercepted. Tim Foley. The veteran strong safety number 25 from Purdue. Now in his ninth year. Picks off uh, Joe Ferguson throw. Only the fourth time this season Ferguson's been intercepted. And the Dolphins have the ball back. The real good pass rushes force good quarterbacks to do things they wouldn't ordinarily do. This time, Ferguson, as he gets back, he's trying to go to Butler down the field. He hasn't been able to get to him all day. Has to elude somebody on the rush. That time he got in front of Frank Lewis. Tim Foley almost picked one off earlier on the same play. This time he made it stick. So it's 17-0, and Miami has the ball back. And we'll be back at the Orange Bowl in a moment. Now, Greasy takes a deep drop, lots of time, but the rip man is open. The great one turns over the middle, Matt Moore, and he is down inside the Buffalo 30, and the Dolphins are looking to put the KO punch down in this game early. <laughs> If they you know, haven't done it already. Well, it's, it's the quality. You find the top quarterbacks, they have this quality. When they're going bad, bad, there's something within them that gets them turned on. It's like, oh, yeah, I file all of you. I'm going to have myself <laughs> a good day. If you want to come out and watch, good luck. But that ball was thrown about as well as it could be thrown. That was vintage greasy. And vintage coverage, as you get a look on the slow motion. Our producer here today for NBC is George Finkel. Our director, John Gonzalez. Nat Moore moves out on the right flank again. up the middle not much there a big surprise going on at Cincinnati the Steelers fumbled the kickoff and the Bengals took it back in and now they lead the Steelers 20 to 3 in the second quarter as you know the Bengals have not won a game this season not till today well Pittsburgh's been coming back but they've got their work cut out for them today because they're playing up in uh, in Cincinnati and when you're playing in that stadium with a 17 point deficit you've got some work cut out for you uh, you sure do boy you better you better be ready for 60 minutes when you play the Steelers. They're the best. They are the best. They're going to win it again. They are? Second and second. <laughs> Up what I've seen of them. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and is intended for the private use of our audience. And he rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Miami Dolphins and the National Football League is prohibited. Talking about Shula in Notre Dame, that has been rumored for a long time. Shula once applied there to be an assistant coach and was turned down by Joe Kuharik. I don't think he's taking assistant's job. Here comes Zonk. He's been running at will all day long. Give him a little rest. It's third down and seven now. Takes a look, fires, and the ball is complete down to the 16-yard line. What a super-looking catch that was. Look that. Bruce Hardy, the tight end, comes back at the ball, and the reception goes. It's a first down for the Dolphins. And we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is WGR TV2, the Buffalo. So the Dolphins are challenging again as the break in the action with two minutes to play in the first half here at the Orange Bowl. Miami 17, Buffalo nothing. Wouldn't it be nice if batteries had gauges so you'd know ahead when you'd need to replace Coming up at halftime, a report on the seventh weekend of play on NFL 79, Brian Gumbel and Mike Adamley. At our NBC studios in New York, update you with the scores and the highlights here at Miami. The Dolphins are cooking right now. Two minutes to play, first half. They lead the Bills 17 to nothing. Greasy thrown the ball four times. Just completed four for 52 yards. Now he goes to Zaka. And the Bills finally get Zaka down for no gain. Took a few hard hits. Scott Hutchinson put on the second one. Charles Rome was also on the play. 147 left to play at the Orange Bowl in Miami. The Dolphins in white leading the game 17-0. This is Don Cricky with John Brody. As Miami, criticized openly by its coach, Don Shula for not having offense, broke the game early when Tony Nathan, a rookie from Alabama, ran 86 yards for a touchdown and a punt return. And that got the Dolphins all jacked up. Their defense came out, pushed Buffalo back, 
Shortly thereafter, Zaka was in the end zone after a sustained drive of 64 yards. For a second touchdown, Von Schaumann hit a field goal of 17-0, and there could be more. Swing pass goes out to Bulldog. Lost the handle. Big Boo retired and was lured back. He's trimmed down. He used to play at 230. He's down to 210 now. Hey, Boo can, he can still get it done. He used to be a 9-6 sprinter at TCU, and he came into pro football, had three or four just outstanding years, and then he developed his skills to where he was an all-purpose all back. He's been a fine pass-catching uh, halfback. Every team needs one. Shula utilizes him in that position. He dropped that ball, but you won't see Boo drop very many. Bulash, when he weighed 225, ran track for Texas Christian, ran a 9500. That's fast. Cincinnati scored another one. Franco Harris fumbled for the Steelers, and the Bengals ran it in from 31 yards out. Greasy throws. Good coverage on the play. Dropping back Isaiah Robertson, number 58, the former L.A. Ram. Which has been playing pretty good here in Buffalo. That's two coverages in a row where he blanketed the receiver. Greasy's trying to pick on him. So far, it hadn't worked out. So Greasy now with an incomplete pass. He's not had many of those today. That's his first one. Don Shula seems well pleased with this whole proceeding. They got a big one next week. We'll be up there for that one, John, when the Dolphins go to New England. You'll see that in most parts of the country as part of an NBC devil. That one could have been blocked by a helmet. Yeah, he didn't get that one up over his offensive line. It went under the crossbar. That doesn't count. So the Bills take over the football, trailing 17-0. You'll see all the highlights of that spectacular game at Cincinnati, spectacular for the Bengals, and they're routing the Pittsburgh Steelers right now. We go to NFL 79 at halftime. Here at Miami, we have a minute and four seconds left to play in the first half. The Bills have not yet put up points, nor have they been close. Buffalo breaks the huddle on offense. Joe Ferguson, at quarterback, who has been the best in the NFL this season, having an off day. Houston leading Baltimore. Jesse Baker, a rookie defensive end, picked up a fumble and ran it in 20 yards for a touchdown. Greg Landry fumbled. Bert Jones isn't playing again this week. Ferguson fires. Beautiful play, a reception downfield at the 38-yard line. Frank Lewis from Grambling going way up in the air to take the ball, then a hard hit and held on. That's what I love about the way Ferguson throws, is he can throw those patterns. 20 yards deep to the outside. The ball goes on the line. It gives the receiver a chance to beat his defender. And when he does, get the ball right at the spot. Uh, you can see when Lewis catches one, it's usually for a long way, almost 25 yards to catch. 53 seconds left to play. In the first half, we'll be back in a moment. announcement was furnished as a public service by the National Football League. 53 seconds left to play in the first half. We look at Bob Greasy waiting on the sideline. The last time I saw Buffalo in this situation before the half, they were playing the Jets. They were down by 12 points. They ended up winning the ball game big. That's right. And uh, they need some kind of a play by a Jerry Butler or a Frank Lewis to get them on the scoreboard. Well, they've got those two flanked to either side. A very disturbing report will give you an injury to Ron Jaworski, the, the Philadelphia Eagles quarterback. He's been taken from the field at St. Louis with a leg injury. Greasy on the sidelines, and there is the throw to Jerry Butler as Ferguson drills it right where John Brody was looking for it. I've got to... When you see a guy throw a ball before a man makes a break, and when he turns, Butler just turned around, the ball hit him right in the zero. Now, ball can't be thrown any better than this one. Watch, as he turns, bang, thank you very much, see what I can get. Those are two perfect throws. They've got it down to scoring position. Here we go with another one. A swing pass goes out. Roland Hooks has the football for the Bills inside the 25-yard line. He's not done yet. He's down to the 24. And the clock shows 19 seconds to play in the first half, and it's stopped. 18 seconds now. Ernest Roan finally made the tackle, so the Bills are challenging with just seconds remaining in the first half. They can get points up here. We could have a football game. Shula obviously not pleased with the yardage his team is giving up to Ferguson at this point. Buffalo's the kind of team that I'd be a little scared of if I got too far ahead because it forces them to do what they do best on first down, second down, third down all the time. 
when you've got Ferguson just firing the ball, seeing what sticks, you see Bill Munson down there in the frame with him. Uh, he's the man with the blue jacket on, the back of his head to you. The fellow's been playing 16 years around this league, and he's helped Joe a lot this year. Joe's never had an older guy to look to, and uh, Joe mentioned to me earlier, he said, you know, it's kind of nice having Bill's thoughts around. He's very sane. He keeps things at a very level edge, and getting back to what I was talking about, when Ferguson has to throw, the Bills scare me to death It's if I'm playing defense, and when they're trying to mix it up with the run and the pass, uh, I'm not so worried if I'm playing defense. So right now, I think Miami has a problem. John, uh, Steve Grogan just threw to Stanley Morgan from 10 yards out. New England takes the lead over Chicago at Soldier Field, 7-0. All the details in that game and all the scores will be coming up at halftime on a report NFL 79. Don Shula, the master of Miami, says he's just a guy who rolls up his sleeves and goes to work. Always looking for the winning edge, and he usually finds it. Right now, his team has a 17-0 lead. 18 seconds to play, first half. Ferguson sets his offense with three wide receivers. The Miami Dolphin crowd comes alive now as the Bills start to challenge. Ferguson looking. And the play is whistled dead. The flag was thrown from way in the end zone. Oh, my. Kim Camper coming off. Looks like he's hurt a leg. Looks to me as if it just took a little bit too long getting the He's had a knee problem, Bo Camper. Missed the early part of the season. He's played a great game today, and you can tell how he feels about the whole thing. Oh, well, when, you get, an player. when you get an injured leg, Don, I mean, uh, everything you work so hard yeah. for is, is gone, whether it be just for a week, two weeks, or a year or two. It's... Kim Bocamp around the sidelines. The assessment against Buffalo five yards sets the ball back now to the 29 yard line where it'll be first and 15. The Bills were too long getting the ball in play. They overused the allotted 30 seconds. So now the game clock shows 15 seconds to play in the half. The Bills huddle it up again. First and 15 is Gordon McCarter having problem with his microphone. I think Ferguson was trying to get those four seconds back on the clock because they stopped it before the play got underway when there was 19 seconds left. Four seconds is a whole lot of difference. Uh, yeah, that's right. When you're getting down to the end of the half. That's right. That's another clock. Game clock shows 15 seconds, but... They, what? They'll let the play go four seconds before they start the clock. First down, 15. Ball of the 29-yard line of Miami. Ferguson with the deep drop again. Here's the rush. He steps in. Triggers and lets her go out of bounds. 12 seconds left to play in the first half. Ferguson's now thrown the ball 13 times to the Bills. Has completed five for 55 yards. Again, repeating Ron Jaworski, the Eagle quarterback, was helped from the field with a leg injury in that game at St. Louis. And now Bob Chandler, who has not played this season after suffering a separated shoulder in the preseason, a workout, is in the lineup for the first time. This is one of the great pass catchers in football. Another guy you don't hear as much about as you should. The last couple of years, he's caught about 120 passes for Buffalo. You don't hear a lot about the teams that don't win a lot of games. Second down and 15 with 12 seconds to play in the half. Ferguson looks. The ball is Joe Devlin wisely falls on it with five seconds left and three seconds, two seconds. Well, the Bills will let the clock run out. They do. John, it looked like it looked like uh, Joe just dropped the ball. The betters got his hand in there and forced the forced the fumble. It was an alert play by Devlin to even fall on it. So the Buffalo threat is stopped again by inspired play by the Miami defense, and Shula takes his winnings to the locker room for the halftime. As the Dolphins are in the lead 17 to nothing, a report on NFL 79 is coming up uh, here on NBC. Guys might be blue, but it's still raining, Don. Right. Rained all day yesterday, rained real hard this morning, almost to kickoff time, and started up late in the first quarter. We've had from light to heavy rain ever since. Now, Nickemeyer moves into the ball, hits it well downfield. He'll take Nathan four yards deep in the end zone. He's going to bring it out. Nathan takes it out to the 15, to the 20. 
Tries to go to the outside, but the Bills contain him and knock him down at the 22-yard line. So Miami goes on offense first and 10. And for the Miami Dolphins on offense, they'll have Bob Greasy at quarterback. Delvin Williams and Larry Zonka are the running backs. Duriel Harris and Nat Moore are the wide receivers. Bob Kuchenberg and Mike Current the tackles. Ed Newman and Larry Little the guards. Jim Langer will be down over the ball at center. We'll see if Newman at Laxo apparently going to be back in there at right guard for Larry Little. I think Little did come back yeah, in the ball game. He's out there. Had the injury in the first half, so Little will start. Kadish is the nose tackle for Buffalo. The former Miami Dolphin lining up the cross from Langer. Greasy goes to the run. Running with the ball, but not very far. As Shane Nelson comes in to make the play on him is Delvin Williams. Gain of a yard at that. Nelson's been playing good football. Third year from Baylor. We mentioned Kadish. Kadish does a good job right at the center. If you, if you take Langer and you stuff things up, up the middle, it allows your linebackers to come in and clean up the work, and it's uh, exactly what they did. Kadish came here as the number one draft choice out of Notre Dame in 1972, reported out of shape. And Shula cut him. He was gone. He played well for Buffalo. He's been embroiled in some contract difficulties, but apparently that's been settled. Pitch back goes to Delvin Williams. Bills come out playing football, and they knock down Delvin Williams. Kadish comes across. Kadish is taking on an all-pro center in Langer and winning right now. Let's get some of these Dolphins. He doesn't like Shuley. He makes no bones about that. I don't think <laughs> Shuley's overly affectionate towards Kadish. He's been a number one, and it didn't work out at the time. That's just the way it works in this game sometimes. They say about Don Shuley, he likes those players to play hurt because he has a very high tolerance for somebody else's pain. <laughs> Bulash and Gary Davis are the setbacks now for Miami. A lot of wind, but not much rain at this point. Temperature is 75 degrees. Third down and eight. Uh-oh. Gary Davis in a foot race. Look out. Gary Davis has a hand to beat the finals. Jeff Nixon catches him. Gary Davis got the open lane up the middle and took off like a spinner. And rookie Jeff Nixon finally caught him or he'd have been gone. That's the kind of play, Don, and everybody in the stands when they stop it at the line of scrimmage said, what kind of conservative football is that? Running the ball into the middle. However, it's a trap play, they, and it's a sucker play. They got him to bite. The hole is big enough to drive a truck through. Gary Davis didn't hit anybody until he got 12, 13 yards down the field. Picked up a long gainer. Miami keeps control. A 41-yard gain on his first carry, 42 yards. So he comes out, and the Dolphins now start to mount a challenge. Bills have stopped them up to that point. Sanka runs, and he buries it into the middle and takes it down to the 31-yard line. Kadish stopped him. Gary Davis, 200-pound back out of Cal Poly at San Luis Obispo. 12-15 left to play in the third quarter, and the Dolphins leading as they did at the half, 17-0. Now, both these clubs coming off of losses. Miami was beaten last Monday night at Oakland. The Bills were beaten at home last week against the Chicago Bears, losing 7 0. Next Sunday, the Buffalo Bills play Baltimore at Orchard Park, and the Miami Dolphins go to New England. Second down and a long seven for the Dolphins. Greasy, he can sit down and write a letter back there. He almost had to get on his horse and chase Haslett down the field because Jim was in a great position. He played it all the way. Uh, Greasy never had a chance to see him. He just kind of stayed off the ball. Watch this. Now he's over into his area. He hasn't committed to the ball yet. Oops, here it goes, and he's in perfect Eight. position to come in, cut in front of, of the receiver and pick off the ball. Got to hang on to him. Tampa Bay at home after losing for the first time last week, leading New Orleans in the third quarter, a 7-0 game. As Hazlitt comes out now, and it's going to be third and seven for Miami. Bills go with the extra defensive back. Jeff Nixon, the rookie from Richmond, who saved the touchdown when he caught Gary Davis, playing way back. Greasy backpedaling, takes a look, lets her go long. Oh, what a play on defense. That was touched down to Jim Cephalo, and it was broken up. Charles Rome, number 26. Who the Dolphins remember well from the first game when he ran back a block field goal for a touchdown. Jeff gets up in the air. His hang time was good. He got it. Charles Rome was very lucky that he got a chance to get to that ball. Greasy 
As you see, the ball's wobbling a little. That's not the way Greasy normally throws it. It's also a little underthrown. Well-thrown ball would have been six. Would it? Buffalo had the defense beaten, but Charles Rome's recovered. And now Von Schaumann will try a field goal from the 39-yard line. It'll be a 49-yard attempt. That didn't even get to the end zone. Now it rolls in. A punt by Von Schaumann. Picked up 11. Yep. Tried to get it down inside, but he didn't get there. Just goes into the end zone very nearly a down ball inside the five yard line but the Buffalo Bills get the ball back now they have it first and ten at their 20 their first possession of the third quarter. Dodge announces a truck and van rebate countdown. Get a full size pickup, a Dodge van or a Ram Charger and a $400 check to go with it. But hurry, October 18th is the last day and the countdown is on. Chrysler has given dealers the biggest cash incentives in Chrysler's history. Big discounts they can pass on to you. But hurry, the countdown is on. Get a great deal and a $400 check. October 18th, the very last day. For those parents who realize that $500 isn't too much to spend to expand their child's world, Radio Shack has the perfect gift. The TRS-80 computer, the most significant investment a parent can make. Programs for your child's education or your business, finance, and home use. Let your children discover tomorrow's technology today. The TRS-80, the biggest name in little computers. Only at Radio Shack. A Tandy company. Next Sunday, start your day with NFL 79. Two of the hardest hitters in boxing tee it up and go toe-to-toe -to -toe for the WBA Heavyweight Championship of the World. Undefeated Big John Tate squares it off against undefeated Harry Kotsia, live from Pretoria, South Africa. You went over to that one, John? I might, I might miss that one. <laughs> I'd like to see it. But NBC will be there. Live coverage here is the handoff to Curtis Brown. In at middle guard, number 73. Big nose tackle in his third year from Alabama. Shunned the block. Made the knockdown. Tom Howard played the play very well. He's got a man on the other side, Doug Metters, who's been having an excellent afternoon. We'll take a look. He's playing. Joe Devlin's playing against him right before the half. We saw him cause a fumble by Ferguson. Nobody's run over him all day. Metters is good. You don't hear a lot about him. I think he was drafted about the ninth round out of Nevada, Reno. But he's really come on. They think they've got something here. Doug Better, 75, and right in. Second down and 10 for Buffalo. Ferguson goes to the run. Roland Hooks starting inside. Loses the ball. But I believe the play was whistled dead, John. 10.35 to play in the third quarter. It was dead. Betters was in there. But the play wasn't too effective either. Now they've got a third down and about nine or ten yards to go. As we see, nobody's pushing anybody around from Buffalo to Miami. When Miami has the ball, they seem to be moving people a little better at the line of scrimmage. As a result, it's going to force Ferguson to throw the ball at will. I, I'm a little surprised he hasn't thrown it on one of the first two plays. Yeah, the offense has been predictable, but maybe because it has been, it has been difficult for Miami. They've probably been looking for the first down pass. Consequently, Ferguson looking to break it up the front with a run. Third down and five. Quick drop. Ferguson steps in. He throws. He's got a man. The reception is made for a first down and plenty more. Out to the 37-yard line. Frank Lewis came back at the ball and caught it down on one knee. He has two good receptions in this game. That's one of those times where the real strong arm comes into play. Aren't many quarterbacks in the game that could get away from a rush, be as far off balance as Joe was, and still get the ball out to the sideline as swiftly as he did. Norris Thomas, 41, you saw come back. He was beaten on the play, but it was very difficult to defend against. And now with 9.20 to play in the third quarter, Miami in the lead, 17-0. The Bills have the ball first and 10 at their 37. Butler is wide to the left against Gerald Small. He throws to him. Boy, he can play. Butler goes way up and takes the ball at the 45-yard line of Miami. A gain of 17 yards and a first down, 18-yard gain. It's one of the few times today that Ferguson has been able to get Butler in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Occasionally, as we mentioned earlier in the game, he'll be able to do it going to small side because they respect small so much. 
This time, he had no linebacker help. It was an easy throw, an easy catch. They pick up a first. So there's nobody in front of him to block his vision. The ball was thrown a little behind him, but he makes a fine reception. Gary Butler comes out again. He's going to be seeing the football more. His first in 10 Buffalo at the 45-yard line of Miami. Gary Miller on the sweep. Cuts up field, and Miller gets ahead for a gain of six or seven yards inside the 40-yard line of Miami. Doug Betters finally knocked him down. Betters and Chambers on the tackle. Taking a look at Don Shuley, you can see he's he's a bit involved. He doesn't take much for granted. He knows that Buffalo is one of those teams that can put 14, 21 points on the board uh, in a very short period of time. Talk to the Jets or Cincinnati. Buffalo scored 51 against Cincinnati, 46 against the Jets. And right now they're looking to break the ice here, get off the side. Archie Manning just threw for a touchdown, ran for one, it's 5 7 7. Saints and Tampa Bay. Ferguson, play fake, and look, he's got a man open. Frank Lewis is inside the 20-yard line. He's down to the 19. So Buffalo, behind the right arm of Joe Ferguson, starts to cook here in the third quarter. Excellent call, excellent throw. He's in a run-pass situation. Simple little play-action pass. You can see Benner's trying to put a little, a little pressure on him, but he's got Frank Lewis wide open in the middle of the field. The rain has stopped. So Buffalo's throwing game can gear up right now. There is Frank Lewis. He is out on the right flank. Gary Butler, single coverage against him. Gerald Small is single coverage against him. Ferguson goes to the run. Fumble! I think Buffalo, Buffalo got it. the ball back. in the game his first carry he lost the ball and got it back and he got a hit for six yards it looked from up here and we'll see in the replay as if it was kicked back to him he loses the ball right here here it comes back thank you very much does draw a crowd that football doesn't it? hey Willie Parker on Baumhauer he does his job better strikes to play a game get inside everything got jammed up now Buffalo is challenging second down and five at the 15 yard line of Miami to Miller. Sometimes you get hit, sometimes you get hit. That is one of the toughest plays in the game for a quarterback to make. He has to contain. He came all the way in from the offside. Matheson, 53, has been around 13 years with the guy who drilled him. And Norris Thomas did a little work himself. Washington and Cleveland now tied 6-6. Two Mark Mosley field goals for the Redskins. Earl Campbell has run it in from seven yards out. 14-6. If Pittsburgh loses, Houston goes to the top of the AFC Central. Will they be in a tie, actually, with the Steelers? Ferguson looks. Fires. Nance open. Frank Lewis is down inside the 10. It's a first down for the Buffalo Bills at the eight-yard line of Miami. That's, that's one of those patterns but you have to rely on your receiver to do some adjustment. Ferguson went back. He had two people running corners. Frank Lewis running a little delay pattern. When he did so, it was cluttered up in the middle. He just cut the ball up short, came to the outside, and picked up the first. The Dolphins ranked fourth in the NFL in total defense. They ranked third in rushing defense. They've given up fewer touchdowns than any team in the National Football League this season. Right now, Buffalo, no points up and threatening. Inside the five, he's down close to the three-yard line. Good execution. They got those power guards out in front of that one. Delamalier and Reggie McKenzie. Jones and Devlin the tackles. Willie Parker the center. Good blocking up front. You bet. And they could, it couldn't have come at a better time on first down to pick up six yards inside the ten-yard line. It's no picnic with second and three. Those are the toughest yards in the game down there. But to get six on first down gives them a chance to either run or pass, and it makes things a whole lot easier. Third quarter moving by quickly, John. 14-15 left to play in it. Second and goal from the three. Roland Hooks. Look at that play. They mark him out at the one-yard line. He's a key down. It's all a touchdown. Yeah, it looked like a touchdown all the way. 
seconds after the play was over, they signaled touchdown. Well, they had to make sure. They had to find out whether or not he stepped out of bounds when he started spinning. We'll get a chance to look at it. He just outruns the pursuit. Foley thinks he's got him trapped. He gets outside, gets away from Norris Thomas, and as he goes out of bounds, he's got the ball over the goal line. There is Coach Shula looking on now as he sees his powerful defense literally taken apart by Ferguson passing and subsequently the touchdown run by Roland Hook. Nick Nickemeyer drills the extra point up and through and with 357 left to play in the third quarter the Buffalo Bills are on the board and they now trail Miami 17 to 7. In Miami, and that man, Roland Hooks, just went in from three yards out for Buffalo's first touchdown. It's 17-7 Miami, third quarter, 3.56 to play in it. The kickoff goes to Tony Nathan, who ran back a punt, 86 reverse. yards. He hands off on a reverse to Don Besselow. And Besselow, a rookie from Georgia Tech, is knocked out of bounds to the 33-yard line. Nickemeyer got it. Next Sunday, kickoff exciting football action with NFL 79 when it takes a look at the life on the inactive list through the eyes of injured receiver Billy Brooks of the Cincinnati Bengals. Then an NFL doubleheader. Early games include the Dolphins versus the Patriots. Most of the country will see that. Other matchups, Oakland and the Jets, Cincinnati at Cleveland, Baltimore at Buffalo. And then the doubleheader game for most parts of the country, San Diego at Los Angeles, Houston at Seattle. That's an NBC doubleheader next Sunday. First down and 10 Miami, 32-yard line. Greasy gives off. Delvin Williams is caught by Lucius Sanford back of the 25-yard line, a loss of seven yards. Mm. You talk about your outstanding defensive plays by Lucius Sanford. He took Ed Newman and just pushed him right back in the backfield. When you've got a guard that's leading your back and he's standing behind him, you're in trouble. <laughs> and I tell you, Newman bench presses over 500 pounds. He's the strongest guy on the team. I know that always impresses you, the weightlifters. Well, you can catch anybody going the wrong way and you can throw them a long ways, and that's exactly what Sanford did. That's how it stands right now in the AFC East. Gary Davis and Norm Bulash in the offensive set now for Miami. Second down and about 18 yards to go for the first down. Hand off. Gary Davis, he's got a problem. Breaks one. And the Bills are out there striking hard now. He got back some of the lost yardage, but it's going to be third and about 11 for Miami. Mario Clark, 29, hit in the left corner. Ben Williams made a pretty good play. The problem was he didn't have enough pursuit coming with him. You can see as he spins off the block, He's, he, he forces Gary Davis to go outside a lot farther than he would like so that when he cuts up, the pursuit's there to handle him. Davis, as you see, has run the ball just twice. That first one was a 41-yarder in the first half. Led to the field goal. Third down and 11 for Miami. Here's the rush on Greasy. He throws. He's got a man open in jury. The first down for the Dolphins at midfield. A perfect strike by Greasy. He had no lane to throw it in. He had to throw it over the top of linebackers, and he did it, did it with perfect touch. Hang in there, Daryl. It gets a little rough when that ball's coming rather slowly, and you're in the middle of the field. It does attract the crowd. You can see here, Bob pulls the string on it a little. Throws it over the top of the linebacker. Has it. When he does so, Daryl Harris is waiting. Harris came right between the deep drop of the linebackers and in front of the zone coverage of the defensive backs. And the strike is right there for the big gainer. It's a first down for Miami. Midfield. Dolphins leading the game 17-7. 125 to go. Third quarter. They go to the run up the middle. It doesn't get too much. Maybe three. Bob Avellini has just passed for the first touchdown of the game for the Chicago Bears, a 54-yarder to Dave Williams. Grogan's thrown for two New England scores, as in the second quarter, the Patriots lead the Chicago Bears 14-7. And here in Miami, we look at number 39 leading number 24, Delvin Williams. Pickup of about four, the easy way. We're having some pretty good collisions in that middle, just like we like it. Well, Buffalo's using a lot of people in the middle. They're trying to force him to throw. You gotta stop when they do so. Second down and six Miami. Zonka is hit hard and driven back. D. Hardison in the game, a 270-pound offensive end, number 74, in the second year from North Carolina. 
Knockdown is made at the 43-yard line. The end zone pylon, they call it, as you see the ground-level camera. And Zaka goes back to the backfield with 64 yards in the books today and a six-yard touchdown run. Third quarter is winding out on us very quickly. We're down to 14 seconds in running. Apparently the Dolphins are going to let it run out. They just soon be going with the wind is against it. You got it. And that is the end of the third quarter here at the Orange Bowl in Miami as the Miami Dolphins now will shift sides with the Bills and Miami with the timeout lead 17-7. So far today they are. New Orleans out in front of Tampa Bay, 14 to 7. Tony Galbraith just ran in from six yards out for the Saints as they take a 14-7 lead. Maybe Tampa Bay isn't ready for the Super Bowl. They're a pretty good team, but I, I don't, it's a little premature. Third down and about three yards to go for the first down. Here comes Gary Davis turning the corner and he is stopped by the Buffalo Bills two yards short of the first down. Isaiah Robertson number 58 made the play. That brings up fourth down. George Roberts the putter is coming out as we have 14 43 left to play in the game. Miami leading 17 7 Bills drop back two punt returners. Pacone goes back as does Keith Moody. Moody number two in the AFC in returning punts. There is George Roberts in the second year from Virginia Tech. He came here as a free agent. Accurate kicker. He'll knock it out of bounds inside the 20. He'll place it inside the 10 and a little loop punt. Bills go for the rush. Ball is hit down at the five yard line. Can the Miami Dolphins get to it? Almost. Up to touch the end zone line. Just touched it. Touchback. Comes out to the 20. the best efforts of rookie Glenn Blackwood from Texas. Boy, is that kid a hitter in college. He almost downs it. Don, he makes an excellent play, but you can see how accurate the officials are. They're right there. The ball just touches the line. Out to the 20. Zonka at rest at the moment. The Miami defense on the field as Buffalo takes over the ball on the touchback. First and ten. Dolphins led at the half 17-0. Bills have the only touchdown of the second half. They trail 17-7. Terry Miller looking to break one. A lightning quick back out of Oklahoma State. Very big drive, Don, for, for, for the Bills. If they can get a score right now, they are in the game with a lot of time to play. Excellent offensive line surge to Lama Lure. Willie Parker made good blocks at the point of attack. They've only got one yard for a first down. It looks when when Buffalo gets hot, you can kind of feel it right now. It, it looks as if they feel they got things going their way offensively. Well, the wind has died down a great deal. They're working into it. Second down and about a yard and a half to go for the first down. And up. Mike Collier runs and doesn't get there. Collier's going to be short. That'll bring up third down and about a yard or two. Big Bob Baumhauer, Shula says when they come here from Alabama, they're ready to play pro football. The Bear trains them. <laughs> he gets them ready. Had them ready yesterday. They beat Florida 40 to nothing. Ruben Gant, double tight ends now. Steve Pizarkowicz is thrown to Mel Gray for 78 yards, and the Cardinals lead the Eagles 13-7. The one good piece of news for Philadelphia, however, is Jawor Jaworski is back in the ball game. He is back. Oh, yeah. that's good to hear. They'll be glad to hear that in Lackawanna, New York, outside of Buffalo, where he's from. Jaworski is back in the game after being taken out with the leg injury. But the Bills took too long. So instead of third and less than a yard, it's going to be third and just over five. Not okay, Don. That's one time where that's that's the sort of error you just can't afford to make. It happens for, for different reasons. However, that's the second time it's happened to Buffalo today. And, and there's no reason for it other than the fact that maybe plays are a little slow coming in from the bench. You notice Miami, Greasy calls the plays. In Buffalo, the bench calls the plays. There are a lot of people in, instrumental in making that call. When you get the play to the quarterback too late, sometimes you're going to get caught that way. New Orleans is getting after Tampa Bay now. Manning just threw to Henry Childs for 15 yards. <laughs> 
third down and just over five for Buffalo. Ferguson looks, fires, there's a man out there, but it's tipped and broken up. Nicely done by Neil Colsey. A free safety from Ohio State who's right here from Coral Gables. After uh, some years with the Oakland Raiders, he comes back now to play in Miami. Neil's always been that type of player. That's uh, he's the center fielder type yeah. of, uh, of a defensive back. He loves to be in a position where he can take chances at, at certain times, and that's what that's the opportunity he's got in Miami. So now the Bills have their punter Rusty Jackson in the game, and back deep for Miami is Nathan again. Nathan moving up on the ball, takes it on the run at the 44-yard line, turns outside, is cut by Joe Ship. And it's cut by Doug Green, number 21. So the Dolphins go back on offense with 12-21 left to play in the football game, and Miami in the lead 17-7. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl in a moment. What do you have? He wants an Anheuser-Busch natural like this. Hey, just say natural. That way he won't have to move his lips so much. Okay, a natural. This guy real? You know, for a piece of wood, you speak with remarkable clairvoyance. Yeah? What's your excuse? Les. Hey, man, I apologize. Forget it. Anyone so appreciatory of natural, smooth, clean taste is okay by me. Just another to say natural next time. Must be hard working with this dummy. Ah, oh, he's all right. <laughs> if anyone looks forward to the start of a new day, it's a big A auto parts store, because each new day is filled with challenging customer requests for quality parts and friendly service. Take yesterday, for example. Got an oil filter for a Ferrari? Do you hook the black one to the plus or minus? I need heavy-duty shocks. A muffler for a Merc. Boy, have you got metric tools. Quality parts, friendly service. That's big A. Have you got a cup of coffee? Sure. The hard-working auto parts store. Back at Miami, we pause briefly for station identification. This is the NBC television network. This is WGR TV 2, Buffalo. With John Brody, this is Don Crickey, and the Miami Dolphins on offense, as you see the opposing coaches, Chuck Knox and Don Shula. 12-21 left to play in the football game. Miami leading 17-7. Dolphins were up at halftime 17-0. They've not scored in the second half. Right now they have their power offense in. Two tight ends, just one wide receiver. They're going to run the ball and try to control the clock. They go to Delvin Williams. He got ahead for two or three yards. Isaiah Robertson fills quickly 58 and hits him. Don, we mentioned earlier that, you know, Buffalo is taking chances defensively. They're trying to stop Miami at the line of scrimmage when they run the ball. Both of their linebackers, Isaiah Robertson and Lucius Sanford on the outsides, are just coming down the line, making somebody do something. When you've got seven people at the line of scrimmage that are all playing the run, you should stop it for very little game. Keep those seven people up close long enough, somebody's going to kill you long. Bills are looking for that. They've got Nixon playing center field. Greasy's looking that way, too. He's looking deep. He fires in the flat. All is caught. Okay, it's a perfect example right there. We're talking, about the, we're talking about the linebackers playing the run, all right? Now, Sanford and Robertson have both been playing right up at the line of scrimmage. This time, he takes just a couple steps too many forward. You can see this. He's playing the run right now. It's a passing situation. It's second down and nine. Now he can't get into his lane. When he does so, he's late. Greasy easily throws the ball over the top of him, and they've got a first down. Moore with 23 receptions on the season is the leading pass catcher for the Dolphins. Greasy having a very sound game. He's not made a mistake. There's been one turnover in the game on the interception of Joe Ferguson. They go back to the two tight ends, Bruce Hardy and Ron Lee. First and 10 Miami, 35-yard line of Buffalo. Delvin Williams once again. Scott Hutchinson did a good job for Buffalo. Second-year player from Florida. Shot the gap and knocked it down. Tony Franklin just hit a field goal for the Eagles. They're back in the game, trailing St. Louis, 13-10 in the third quarter. And the New York Giants are getting well against the San Francisco 49ers, leading 29-10. Sims has thrown twice to another rookie, Ernest Gray, for touchdown. Steve DeBerg. I don't know if he's the new John Brody, but he's quarterback in the 49ers. He's played pretty well all year, but they can't stop anybody. <laughs> Greasy is 6 for 10 for 84 yards. Handoff goes to Delvin Williams. On second and 10, he got four. 
Smurlis, the nose tackle, 5th 76. He's tough, 270 pounds. He was a wrestler at Boston College. And he's given Langer all he can handle on most plays. The only time they're beating Smurlis when they trap lock him as the Dolphin is down. Delvin Williams is down. So uh, Dell Williams running back for Miami is being attended to. There's a break in the action here at the Orange Bowl. 10.43 left to play in the game. The Dolphins in the lead, 17-7. Taking a three-point lead on Washington late in the third quarter. Third down and seven for Miami. He got him again. Hardy is in the end zone. Big tight end. It was up in the air looking for the ball but couldn't hold on. 77, Ben Williams, the defensive end for Buffalo, looked like he left early. You think just using your head isn't important? Third and one, Buffalo gets pulled offside, and they got third and seven. Now Greasy is third and seven. He pulls a defensive player from Buffalo offside. They got third and one and a half, and that's the kind of third down situation you can handle. You were saying earlier that he just changes his cadence over what they're used to hearing. Just, about. just a little bit. You don't have to change a lot. You know. Uh, Everybody on both sides of the line are anticipating when that ball's coming up. The good thing is the team with the ball knows it. Zaka goes back in the football game. Now Williams is going back in, so he got well in a hurry. Philadelphia's back on top, 17-13. Wilbert Montgomery ran a touchdown from five yards out. He gets in the end zone, and the Eagles take the lead, 17-13 just over a yard for Miami. Zaka. First down, Dolphin. Charles Gomes, a much smaller cornerback, hit him head on, but Zaka won it. And he gets in, and the clock now winds down inside, 10 minutes to play in the game. You have to meet Zong quick in order to stop him, but even when you do, you've got a lot of work to do. This time, three people hit Larry just before just in front of the line of scrimmage, and he makes two yards on his own, picks up the first. First down and 10 now for Miami. Gary Davis running wide. He is down for a loss of a yard. Buffalo defends well against that. Steve Freeman, the strong safety, came up and made the play. Tonight on NBC, it's Disney's Wonderful World at 7 o'clock. Baseball fever. Then at 8 o'clock, on the big event, The Miracle Worker, starring Patty Duke, Aston, and Melissa Gilbert. At 10 o'clock, it's primetime Sunday with Tom Snyder. That's tonight on NBC. Ball is spotted at the 25-yard line of Buffalo. Miami has it. Second down and 11. Norm Bulash and Gary Davis are the running backs for the Dolphins. Clock shows 8.55 to play in Miami, lead 17-7. going to be down at the eight-yard line. Jerry L. Harris making the cut, greasy deliver in the football, and the Dolphins can put this game away if they take it in from here. Well, they can certainly increase their lead. Uh, I don't know if three touchdowns are in the making, but excellent pass protection. Jerry L. Harris runs a fine pattern. He's one-on-one -on -one against Rhodes. When you get real good pass protection, you're going to hit him. Take a look. Here's Jim Langer blocking on Fred Spearless. Got a little help from Laxo. A lot of help from Axel. Well, it's Pete Langer going away, though. The Dolphins have the ball. First down and goal. Inside the Buffalo 10. Delvin Williams into the middle. There's not much there. The Hills are tightening up against the run. Then their offense is not delivered in this game. Just seven points. And the clock shows 7.50 left to play. 17-7 Miami. It'll be second down and goal coming up from the eight-yard line. Oh, well, the Buffalo fans know that one. 19 straight losses. They beat them the first three out of four games they played them and haven't beat them since. <laughs> Ten years. That He gives off to Zanka, and he's down to about the seven. He didn't get much, maybe a yard or two. Jeff Nixon coming up hard to fill against the run. 
But the Dolphins continue to do their prime objective here, and that's to run that clock down, closing in on seven minutes to play and running. Next week is a doubleheader week on NBC. And one of the feature games to be seen in most parts of the country will be the Miami Dolphins and the New England Patriots locking up at Foxborough. The doubleheader game for most parts of the country, San Diego and Los Angeles. Gracie takes a look in the end zone. He throws. It's intercepted. Jeff Nixon picks it off for Buffalo. Excellent play. Two times in a row by Jeff Nixon, a kid that just comes in on goal line situations, Don. First he fills the hole and stops off for no gain. Now he covers the receiver like a blanket, picks the ball off perfect. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The Miami Dolphins have a friend running the clock in this place. Two seconds ticked off the clock after the interception. He was down. Where it goes at home. <laughs> we'll be back. Jeff Nixon on the left, who made every All-America team last year at the University of Richmond. And here's what he did in the last play before we broke. Jumped in front and picked off a greasy pass. So Buffalo has back the ball with six and a half minutes to go, and the Ferguson will be throwing. He's got a man open. His tight end, Reuben Gant, gets ahead across the 30-yard line to the 32. It's a first down for Buffalo. Chambers, one of the linebackers, hit him. Excuse me, John. No, it's the first time he's gone to Reuben all day long, and it's actually the first time I've seen him open. They keep him in a lot to help protect Ferguson. When they do so, it takes something from their pass offense, but it does help their protection. Jerry Butler is the Bills' leading receiver. Has only one today. He's averaging 19 yards a catch. 26 for the season. First and 10 Buffalo. Clock is running. 5.50 to play. Miami leads 17-7. Here comes Terry Miller. Doug Betters was up to make the stop for Miami, but trying to keep this Dolphin defense honest isn't going to work as far as scoring touchdowns. Well, you almost don't have time to run plays like that. You've got five and a half minutes to get 10 points on the board. They've got to score in a pretty quick manner in order to get the ball back again after Miami gets it on the kickoff. And... Uh, in sweeps and running the ball, isn't going to get it. Unacceptable record for Coach Shula. Winning his coach in football in the 70s. Ferguson. Touched by Doug Better. Ken Jones trying to handle Betters. Betters has taken care of everybody he's been up against. In the first half, he played one, he played the left, the left side. Now he's playing the right side. Take a look at him on Ken Jones. Collier's there, and he's supposed to be able to help. But he gets right around Collier before he gets in a good position. Two men couldn't handle him. He handled Ferguson. So Doug Betters has played the big game of defensive end for Miami. As the Dolphins defense, Gordon, number 50, breaking the huddle. Bo Campers blocking the line on the left side. Gordon is in the game. Defense spreads out now, looking for Ferguson to throw it. Third down and 15. It's good to Ruben Gant. He goes out of bounds to the 39-yard line. He's going to be about three yards short of the first down. They do not, they cannot afford the luxury of punting at this point. They're only got, they've only got time to get the ball on this possession and one other in all probability. I think you'll see him go for it on fourth and three. Glenn Blackwood was in the game, made the play for Miami. 4.38 left to play. The clock is stopped. Now we have a timeout called by the Buffalo Bills. Ferguson on fourth down and three he wants to talk it over with his head coach. So there's a break in the action with the Dolphins in the lead, 17 to seven. We'll return to the Orange Bowl in a moment. With John Brody, this is Don Pricky back at the Orange Bowl in Miami. You see the time remaining to be played, 4:38, and the score: Miami 17, Buffalo seven. It's fourth down and three for the Bills. Fourth and three at Buffalo's 39-yard line. and throws. Bad time for a miscommunication. That might put the lid on this one. 4.32 left to play, and Miami takes over, and Buffalo's end of the field. So Ferguson goes off an errant throw, and the Dolphins on fourth down get back the ball. 
Chuck Knox, a little bit disappointed. I can understand that. He was trying to go to hooks. He couldn't find it. He was moving around, trying to alternate his pattern with Butler, and he actually threw it right in between both of them. Might be the last chance for them, too. Miami takes over, and Shula will go right to the run. Greasy sets his team down, goes to Larry Zaka. And the big pack from Syracuse takes it over the 70-yard mark for the day. Lucius Sanford hit him. We'll watch it ground level. Zaka out of the blocks and right at us. All right, when we get a 10-point lead, we give it to the man. Real good block at the point of attack by Bruce Hardy. That tight end's playing pretty good football. Yes, he is. Producer here today for NBC is George Finkel, our director, John Gonzalez. Batters Harry Van Suskill and Bo McComas, and Paul Merker is our stats man, as we have 3.57 left to play. Second down and four. Zaka. All day long for this big guy. Just keeps plugging. Nelson Perry is stopped by Nelson. NFL report will have a complete rundown of all the scores as we see in the fourth quarter the Cincinnati Bengals about to win their first game of the season. A most impressive victory as they're out in front of Pittsburgh 27 to 3. The Steelers have fumbled eight times in that game and lost six. That was at the last count. Hard to win that way. Real hard. Zonka has 75 yards and 18 carries. It's third and two now. Zonka's alone setback. He gets ahead for enough yardage for the first down, but a penalty marker went up when the ball was snapped. Yeah, it looks like they got a little bit anxious. Zonk has taken off almost 30 pounds since last March. Well, they may have caught Sanford jumping just a little bit before the gun. I didn't see anybody offensively. The following group of the game. Shaken up on the field, so there is a pause in the action. Shane Nelson is taken up. He was on the tackle. We'll be back with 3.09 left to play. The Miami Dolphins will continue to lead the AFC East along with New England if the Patriots hold up. And you'll get a report on everything developing today in the National Football League on NFL Report, which is coming up next here on NBC. Right now, we have three minutes and nine seconds left to play in this game. The Dolphins with the ball, first and 10, 26 yard line of Buffalo. And Miami leads 17-7. Zaka. Like a Clydesdale, isn't he? <laughs> Big clumps of turf fly up. His offensive line moved people back pretty well then. That looked like the play was stopped at the line of scrimmage. He still picked up three. Or two. He was drafted by the Dolphins back in 1968 after he eclipsed the rushing records of people like Jim Brown and Ernie Davis and Floyd Little at Syracuse. Rushed for almost 3,000 yards during his career there. The World Football League took him, made a lot of money, but it didn't make him happy and wants to give it one last shot with Dolphin coach Don Shula. Now he's got everything, a little money and happiness <laughs> on the right club. All those good things. Bob Greasy. Next Sunday, it is an NBC doubleheader day. Miami at New England is the big one that you'll see in most parts of the country. You see the other games, Oakland and New York Jets, Cincinnati at Cleveland, Baltimore at Buffalo. And then the doubleheader game, San Diego and L.A. play at the Coliseum in Los Angeles, Houston at Seattle. That's next Sunday, a doubleheader day on NBC. 2.52 left to play in this game. Miami has been running the ball. They've taken control as Tom Catlin and Chuck Knox look it over. Greasy comes out. Playing a conservative game, a lot of running. He's mixed it with the pass. You see his numbers. He's been intercepted once. It would have been a touchdown. Jeff Nixon stepped in to pick it off for Buffalo on Miami's last possession. Jerry Butler hadn't gotten the ball as much as they'd like him to have it today. Or he would like to have it. Second down and eight. Right back to Zonka. He gets stronger as the game wears on. Zonka takes it down to the 18-yard line. I thought he was going to be retiring in his first year here at Miami because he had very bad headaches. Somebody in their wisdom found out his helmet didn't fit. He's delivered a few, too. That's right. He will pass out those headaches. 
He's doing his job. He's created a first down for the Dolphins. 2.45 left. It doesn't look like Buffalo's even going to get the ball back. Actually, it'll be third and two when we can we go back to the action. And I think we can be pretty sure it will be Zaka once again. He's been getting the first downs and keeping those chain markers moving, keeping the clock running. Who do you think the best team in the league is, John, from what you've seen? Oh, I don't know, and I think it's a little too early to say. I think that personnel-wise, New England stacks up with anybody. The team Miami's playing next week. Uh, Pittsburgh, obviously, is the team that people think are the strongest. Uh, if you take three teams, i got to take Dallas, Pittsburgh, and New England. Uh, but that doesn't mean a team like San Diego can't come out and, and win. I mean, the only thing that San Diego can't state right now is that they have been there. Yeah. Uh, in, in my opinion, that's the only difference between the New England, Pittsburgh, and San Diego. Zaka needs 16 more yards for another 100-yard day. He's got 84 on the afternoon. Now they go to a double setback formation. Zaka the up back in the eye. As you look at it from ground level, this is what the Buffalo Bills will be seeing. Zaka. Well, he makes noise when he carries the ball. There's crashes. He just kind of left a wave behind him. Four fellas had a shot. You heard a pop. Two helmets hit there. Well, this looks like the Zonka of six or seven years ago. He runs low, and the worst thing you can do is hit him because it, he's going to leave a welt somewhere on your body. And he is tough. Picks up four yards without any real <laughs> blocking room. I tell you, another guy that little hitch is at Charles Rome's number 26. He's coming up from the corner and putting a full shot on Zonka. Charles has given away just a little bit of weight, like about 50 pounds. Right now, with two minutes left in the game, Bob Greasy goes over to the sideline to get the game plan from Don Shula, which he already knows. Number 39 is the game plan at this point. We'll be back in a moment. Season, and there's been a lot of other developments around the league, which you'll see in NFL report. Nobody runs on the field here in Miami because that dog <laughs> isn't here to watch the game. He has got his back turned to the action. That dog is all business. And let that thing run around and let people know that he ain't a little leech either. First and ten Dolphins. Zunka. They'll keep on hitting on him. Scott Hutchinson came up and hit him. Steve Freeman hit him. Zunka got a little more though on a first down carry. He brought the ball down close to the 13-yard line. Don Shula will be 50 years old in his next birthday. that we were mentioning earlier. His contract runs through this season and next. And there's been a lot of speculation as whether he'll be here in Miami or whether he'll go someplace else. There are a few people who would hire him, I think. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He can go just about wherever he wants, but he's been so effective here as he has everywhere he's been that uh, I see no reason for a change, and I, I expect very much to see him back. Again, they go to Zonka, and he's down close to the 12-yard line. He's not getting much, but he is getting time, and 107 shows on the clock, and it's running. The Bills have no timeouts left, so it's just a matter now of the Dolphins running out this football game and extending their fifth victory of the year with a big showdown coming up next Sunday at Foxborough, Massachusetts against their arch rivals from the AFC East, the New England Patriots. Miami 17, Buffalo 7, 45 seconds left to play. Dolphins got their first touchdown today at an 86-yard punt return as Joe Ferguson has had, I guess you'd call it, certainly been an off day for him off what he's been doing this season. Well, they haven't had the ball enough, and when they did have it, they didn't sustain much, and it's just been one of those frustrating days against a very good team. Zaka runs. It might be a delay again against Miami. Whistle blew before the snap of the ball with 17 seconds left. Big Bulash, who was coming back from Texas when Don Shula needed another fullback. Well, that's going to be it. The clock's going to wind out. Now off goes Coach Shula with yet another victory in the Orange Bowl. And the Miami Dolphins get ready for the New England Patriots tuning up with a 17-7 victory over the Buffalo Bills. John? 
Well, I think when you take a look at Chuck Knox, he knows he was out, man. They played a team that has better people. Uh, Buffalo continues to play pretty well. Right now, they're a 500 team, and they're normally they're a 500 team as long as number 12 is playing well. Down the line, I think Buffalo will get a lot better. But Miami, on the other hand, has put themselves in a position to fight for the NFC, the NFC, uh, the AFC East. And next week, when they play New England, that will be some kind of football game. And stay with us. We'll be updating all the scores and the highlights around the National Football League on the seventh weekend of play as Bob Greasy must quiet his critics at least for another week as he directs a defective Miami offense that did what it had to do to win the football game. The Dolphins winning over the Buffalo Bills 17 to 7. Buffalo going home next week to play Baltimore and Miami going up to go against the New England Patriots with game that you'll see in most parts of the country as part of an NBC doubleheader. San Diego and Los Angeles the second game. So that was the story here in Miami.